Welcome to episode 21 of the Camera Shake podcast with me, Kirsten Lutz, and my co-host, Nick Kirby. Um, this is episode 21. That's one more than 20, which in <laughs> itself is pretty amazing. <laughs> anyway, so you have come to uh, the right place. If you're interested in photography, video, cameras, tech, um, and all of that kind of kishnizzle, we uh, talk about all of that in this uh, in this podcast. But today, we've got a special guest. Uh, please welcome Mr. Benga Sudiki. Did I pronounce that right? Yeah, yeah, Siddiqui. it's pretty good, pretty yes. good. <laughs> Benga Siddiqui, excellent. Um, so Benga, Benga is a photographer. Um, he's not your ordinary photographer, and it's uh, going to be really interesting. Uh, we'll dive into all the things that he does. So Benga, how are you? I'm very well, I'm very well. How are you guys? Yes, Doing we're well. We're good, yeah. We're good. still here 21 weeks later. So. Yeah. Yeah, I know, fantastic. It's really good. <laughs> cool. So Benga, you've, um, you are... How would you describe yourself as a photographer? Um, lots of people ask me this. I, I, I guess I'm predominantly um, a wedding photographer, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. I do a lot of portrait work. I do um, uh, a lot of beauty shoots as well um, and some macro work. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I t try and delve in, into everything I can. Whenever I get the opportunity to shoot, I'm more than happy to, uh, to, uh, to turn my hand at it. Yeah, we, we originally met um, at a conference, we were shooting a conference. Well, we were shooting the same conference. Yes, we were, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so uh, we got talking since we were obviously working for the same client, as it were. Yes. Um, so, do you do a lot of conference work generally? Um, not too much. Not too much. Um, uh, I, 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 I try and do stuff whenever I'm, I'm given the opportunity to. Um, mm. I do I do enjoy it. Um, so it's it's just really kind of. Whatever I can get my hands on, whatever I'm offered, I, I will. Mm -hmm. I will certainly uh, partake in. Cool. Well, on your website, you've got some excellent wedding shots. Do you find? Uh, do, do you do a lot of weddings generally? Um, I do. Um, I, I don't do as many as a lot of photographers out there. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I try and get to. If I, if I get to anywhere between ten and fifteen a year, I'm, I'm more than happy. Oh, wow. um, photography for me, uh, my photography business is is uh, part of a. Uh, it's a second job, as it were. Mm -hmm. And it's not my main my main job, um, so yeah. Just if I if I if I can get to fifteen a year, I'm very happy with that. Sure. Well, we yeah. get into your main job uh, in a minute as well because that's also photography related. It is, yeah. Parts of it are photography related, yeah. yeah, absolutely, yeah. So we'll we'll talk about it in a minute. But for now, let's um let's have a look at your your uh, photography business. So you, you shoot sure. weddings and events, and of course we've met at an event. Yeah. You know, um, how did you? How, how do you find has that been affected by by the lockdown and the, the whole thing has that had a major impact on your photography side business yeah yeah i mean i, I guess like every other photographer out there everything just kind of went dead and everything got um cancelled or postponed mm -hmm. um so was, i was in the same boat as everybody else um yeah luckily clients are coming back i've got shoots coming up now and mm -hmm. Uh, weddings are getting rebooked again, sometimes a little bit differently to what they originally planned. But mm. you know, it's like everybody else, you just have to kind of get on with it and try and make the most of, the most of what you can. Yeah. Are you, are you worried by the, the sort of latest um, kind of upswing of the, of, of, of the infection numbers in the UK? Does that worry yeah, you at all? It is worrying. It is worrying. I, I, I find myself in a fort more fortunate position than most and that I still have an income coming in, um, yeah. mm -hmm. but it is worrying. Absolutely, you know, people are a little bit nervous to book, which is understandable. Mm -hmm. um, and if they are booking, they, they you, you kind of have to to look for all sorts of contingencies if things go don't go right, or if, as you say, if we all go back into lockdown again, what's going to happen then? And mm -hmm. you know, we, we all have to start making plans, don't we? Yeah. If if I just think about you know what's happened for me is of course my photography business went you know, pretty much to stand still um, at the beginning of, of lockdown. But then my other work that I do for the for the Music Trust has sort of increased because all of a sudden now everybody had to move online and yeah. all the teaching had to happen online. Did you find did you find a similar um, a similar effect for you? Yeah, yeah. In, in, in some parts, I mean, the photography side, obviously that went and then it started to pick up again mm. um, in terms of my other job, my day job, um, obviously that can't go into lockdown and that, that carried on all the way through. Mm. Um, but in terms of that, you know, there was, there was differences in, in how we do stuff and what we have to do and, mm. you know, just keeping ourselves safe and other people safe. 
yeah so it's 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 changed from what it was yeah um but you know we have to it's the new world as it were as it was yeah. the new the new norm <laughs> yeah the new norm so we just have to get used to it and, and get on with it i guess yeah so i mean I, I find that you know generally speaking um photo shoots are picking up again so i'm i'm finding that things are starting to kind of move again and you know bookings yeah. are starting to come in um and I mean, I, certainly i sort of realized that i had the chance you know when when everything went quiet you knocked down i sort of took that as an opportunity to make new contacts and yeah. you know and kind of um kind of rehash some old contacts and just get in touch with people and and so as a consequence now i'm finding that you know, not only are, you know, not only is work coming back in, but it's also, it's different work. You know, yeah. things have, things have sort of moved on a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've had the same with, with some of the weddings that I, that I had booked. Mm. Um, they now rebooking, but it's a much smaller affair. It's outdoors, it's more socially distanced. And, yeah. you know, and even, um, I'm doing a newborn shoot tomorrow. Um, I have to make sure that everything is, clean, you know, all, all my equipment is clean, all, all mm -hmm. the, the props I'm going to use are going to be clean, you know, yeah. so it's just, I guess it's just a different way of, of working and, and of thinking for whatever we're doing. Yeah. You know, we all have to kind of play our part and, and make sure we do it right, I guess. Yeah. Do you, with a newborn shoot, do you shoot that, do you shoot that in a studio or um, do you go to the client or how do you do that? Um, tomorrow's one, I'm going, I'm going to their house. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so I, I'll I'll be masked up and gloved up and <laughs> sanitized and, every, and sanitized and everything. So yeah, yeah. What are your plans for your photography business? Are you planning on growing that over the next year? If you know, <laughs> if things, allow, you know, if life allows, or, you know, if, if the whole situation allows us to do that. Yeah, what, yeah. What if, you if, obviously, if, if 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 the situation allows us, then yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. I'd love to be out there doing doing more. Um, but at the same time, you know, we have, I have to be, you know, I have to be aware of what is going on in the world and and try and you know make things work as best we can. Yeah. Yeah. So. See, I even thought about getting into product photography. Yeah. You know, which is which is not really something that that I do a lot of. I, I do some, but I don't. It's, it's really not the main part of what I do. Yeah. Um, and I kind of thought, you know, during lockdown, I kind of thought, since I can't shoot people, yeah. might as well That's shoot product. things. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You, you, do, you do. You've got the skills. So you might as well try and broaden it and, and use it for as much as you can and yeah. you know, wherever you can. So, you know, I think, I think most people's businesses are going to have to change one way or another, you know, yeah. and start accepting work that maybe we wouldn't have accepted before or, or whatever the case might be just to kind of get working. Yeah. So, you know, um, one of the really positive aspects um, in, in my particular case has been that um, I really had to look much more local, mm. you know, in terms mm. of... Um, making connections and uh and so you know i've done a lot of networking and i've actually gotten to know um a lot more local businesses you know other business owners who are local to where i live yeah and previously that's really not been the case you know, because as you know when you shoot a conference you know it might be god knows where yeah you know, cardiff and, i think we were <laughs> yeah i can't remember where, where were we, yeah. where did we meet? Was, was it cardiff i think it was cardiff was it cardiff was, uh, uh, no, it was Stratford up in Avon. Stratford, Stratford. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's yeah, it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so it's it's easy to overlook your kind of your your, um, your local kind of business landscape when you're when you're shooting these sort of events, you know, because yeah. it might yeah. even be. Um, I remember, you know, the last shoot I did before the last my last conference shoot before lockdown was the very end of February, and it was in Budapest. Oh wow! You know, so yeah. we, you know. Which was great, but then of course the flip side of that is you know you're away for like four days, yeah. you know, and um, and that's not necessarily always easy when it comes to family and all the rest yeah. of it. And so yeah. I kind of um, I quite I learned to enjoy being around more. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <definitely. laughs> lockdown. Yeah, you know? I and mean, that's one of the good things for me that's come out of, of being in lockdown as well is the amount of time I got to spend at home with with the kids and the family. You know. Yeah. And doing stuff with them was has been fantastic. Yeah, so, yeah, that's one of the positives, I guess. How how did your uh, how did your kids take to not having to go to school? <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, they, they they loved it. Um, I, I'm a key worker, so they didn't get to be at home for too too long. Oh, and, uh, okay. They got, they got a few weeks, a few weeks being at home, and then uh, and then they went they went back to school. But you know, they they, they love being at school, yeah. so I'm I'm very lucky on that front. So for for those of you listening, um, who you know, if you're not in the UK, um, so 
the way the rules here worked was that um, schools were shut except for children for, uh, of key workers. So if you worked, you know, if you worked for the police force or um, or the fire department, if you were a teacher, you know, yeah. or a nurse or a doctor or something like that, then your children could still go to work, uh, go to school. So schools were not necessarily shut down, shut down. They were still open, but the number of children at school was vastly, vastly uh, reduced. A lot less, a lot less. Yeah. 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 So they, 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 they love the lockdown. They love the lockdown. They love being uh, at home for a little while. And then they're, yeah. they're really keen to get back to school. And now everybody's back at school. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, my daughter was was definitely looking forward to going back to school. I think she's been missing her friends. Yes, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. quite a lot. So, so yeah, my older daughter, not too sure. <laughs> 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 you know, yeah. cool. Well, let's talk about your day job a little bit because that's also photography related. Yeah, yeah. So I, I work as a forensic practitioner. Mm. Um, a crime scene examiner or soco in old old money. So we, we go and examine crime scenes um, and look for evidence. So part of that, or a big part of that, is um, crime scene photography as well. Mm. Um, so we photograph scenes. Um, I photograph victims of crime, um, mm. photograph post-mortems, all, all that sort of stuff. Mm. It's, uh, yeah, it's really interesting and very varied. So mm. you're the real-life CSI? Yeah, yeah. It's nowhere near as glamorous. I'll tell, I'll tell you <laughs> that. <laughs> it's not glamour at all in what I do. Yeah. Um, but I do enjoy it. it every day is different and yeah, it's a, it's a great job to have. I'm very lucky. Yeah. How, and I'm sure everybody must ask you this, but do you watch, do you watch CSI? <laughs> I do. I do. Do you know, at, at the moment I'm watching a program called, um, Harrow. I don't know if you, if, you, if you've seen it. Harrow? Uh, Harrow. Yeah. It's, it's definitely worth watching it, but it's all about forensics and yeah, yeah. it's, it's great. I, I love it to be honest. I, I really enjoy it. So yeah. How accurate are these TV programs versus <laughs> what real life's like? Uh, most of the time, it's it's fairly accurate. We ne we never catch anybody in an hour. You know, it's never yeah. all kind of wrapped up in an hour. <laughs> that doesn't happen. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, most of the techniques and the stuff that they do is is what we do, I guess. Yeah. Um, just not nowhere near as quickly or or as efficiently as they, as they do. I would love to do it. I think it would be really interesting and, like you say, varied day to day week yeah, to week yeah, yeah, yeah. but it must emotionally it might be quite it must be a difficult one um difficult job to to handle it, it can be it can be you yeah. know and, and for me that's where i use photography really does come in because it, it's my opportunity to express myself it's mm. something completely different to what i yeah. do in the day um i'm able to you know set my own kind of goals and standards and you know i can have my own ideas and bring my own ideas to the table and and i can mm work through it and, and execute what I want to do whereas at work it's all very kind of you know you have to shoot a certain way you have to get a certain look and you know there's not really um there's not really space to expand you have to kind of do it a certain way because that's how it needs to be done whereas <laughs> outside of work I'm able to just kind of do my own and get as crazy and wild as I want with my photography yeah, I mean, I guess you can't you can't just do Photoshop some blood splatters in there or something. <laughs> it's like, make it look a lot too. Outside of work. <laughs> yeah. So I stay well away from all that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, I mean, because because that's more of a like a, a totally like almost like documentary style type of yeah. photography, isn't it? Because you, you're documenting, you know, the evidence essentially. Right? Exactly. Yeah. You're 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 there to document the scene and to show it as it is, so that in years to come or whatever it is that it goes to court, they, they can have a look and they see exactly what it was on the day or what was there. Yeah. So, yeah. We're basically just there to record the scene as it is, mm. which is what we do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's only, that's just part of what we do as well. You know, we, we do all the fingerprint work, we retrieve evidence, we kind of mm. do the whole broad spectrum of what, what a crime scene needs to, to be examined. It's what we do here. Yeah. Were you shooting photography before you moved into this role? Or, or as it kind of developed since you've been in this role. Yeah. So, for, for me, I'd always been interested in photography, and I guess like most people, you know, you know, my dad was a photographer. He wasn't a professional photographer, but he loved doing photography. And I always remember him setting up bed sheets for us to have our our family portraits and stuff. So that's kind of where I started, like being <laughs> interested in photography. Amazing. And then um, from there, it just kind of developed. Really, when I when I got the job as a forensic practitioner, we we, we all. And went through a process of training and when I started we were still using film 
So we got, mm-hmm. got trained in photography using film mm-hmm. um, and everything was manual. Uh, gradually we've moved into using digital now. We're now finally using digital cameras. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, so that, that's for me, that's like the whole process. So I learned, um, I, I knew a little bit about photography from when I, I kind of learned myself. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as like, when I got into the role, then he really got, kind of got taught um, photography for, like, for the job. Did you like back in the back in the film days? Did you have to develop the films yourselves, or did you just did that just go through like a, a lab or something? No, they went they went through a lab. We had um, the police had their own lab, so mm-hmm. we we would shoot the scenes and then it would get developed. And you know, you'd get a letter every time you did anything wrong, you'd get <laughs> <laughs> you'd know about it. So yeah, so <laughs> you, you, we 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 got you know we got um, got taught really well actually. So you yeah. know, and, and a lot of photography that I do now um, is is all manual because that's the way that I, I was taught to do it and you know yeah. even, even when I'm photographing the kids or whatever I always find myself just go into manual because that's what I, I know um, yeah. yeah so it's from that point of view it's been been really really good yeah mm-hmm. well, so, I mean it seems like a really good balance you know um, like because I think it sounds like you're you're able to um, to balance <clears throat> your your work photography in a way um, you, you managed to balance that off against like you know your your sort of your side business yeah yeah i, I try to you know I, I really kind of got into photography outside of work mm. once i started doing it in work and i was like oh this is really good you know i'm really enjoying this and i'd always kind of had a little bit of photog- photographic knowledge and i'd always mm. kind of um messed about with it before yeah. getting the job but then once i got the job and got trained in it I was like, oh yeah, you know, I can, oh, it's really good. I can go off and try this and do different things and mm. change the settings and you know, shoot at two point eight and see what that looked like compared to the f eight that we have to shoot out at work or, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. but, you know, it was yeah. really, really good, and that, that kind of really kind of um, excited me, I guess, uh, yeah. to to kind of take the photography on outside of work. When when you shoot, um, so when you photograph a crime scene, do you have like do you, are there certain um, like preset kind of rules that you have to follow or like what I'm trying to say is like, um, do you ha- like, for instance, do you have to shoot in, in F8, for example, or is there like, are there any kind of regulations that say, you know, you've got to do it in a particular way or is there, do you have creative freedom? <laughs> <I'm trying to> <laughs> <say>. <laughs> you don't have creative freedom. No. You, um, mm-hmm. we, we have to show everything in the scene. So we can't, even if we're, I'm shooting something right at the front of my scene, I still have to show what's at the back. Um, right. So, everything has to be in focus, um, basically. So there's no kind of freedom in, in that sense. Mm. But then there's a reason for that, you know, so that there's no ambiguity in the image yeah, yeah. when it comes to court or whatever. So you can see everything that's in the, in the image. Yeah. Or, you know, obviously outside of work, we can, we can, as you guys know, you can hide, you can lower out the background, you can, yeah. you know, take people's focus to one part of the image or not, you know. But at work, we can't do that. It's, it has yeah. to be... Everything has to be set, and everything has to be to be seen, as it were. Yeah. Do you find like do you sometimes um, do you find yourself having to shoot under like circumstances that make it very difficult? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it's it's the nature of the job. You know, we all know what it entails when you go into it. Mm. Uh, so sometimes it's it, it can be difficult. You know, mm. but you, you, I guess but we 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 have an attitude that we we just have to kind of you know we're doing it for our, for the victims and you know looking to find the truth. So we just kind of. Yeah. have to get on with it and, and get it done hmm. yeah. so it can be difficult but you know being outside of work and doing stuff and family helps and friends and yeah, yeah. you know holidays and uh, yeah everything else you know go 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 to stratford up stratford up on avon that's all it's all good yeah <laughs> all yeah, <help>. yeah. <laughs> how do you like when you go into um into a job like that do you know like let's let's say you get a call um you know something's happened you get a um, go down and, and investigate the crimes. And do you know how much detail do you know in advance? I mean, do you, is it like a surprise when you get, there or do, are you uh, pretty well briefed before you get there so you can kind of mentally prepare almost? Yeah, I mean, I've been doing the job long enough now, so when something comes up, you kind of have an idea mm. uh, of what's happened, and um, we have different systems that, that we can get information from as well. Mm. So a lot of times, when you go into a to a scene, you know pretty much what's happened. You know what you're going to go and meet there. So it, it's not really a surprise. And, and to be honest, um, we all kind of look after each other. So, if, you know, if, if an officer has been there, they'll mm-hmm. tell you what, what's going to be there so, so that you're, you're, you're mentally prepared. You can mentally prepare yourself yeah. before you go in mm-hmm. and deal with it, everything. 
in, in a weird way, this kind of reminds me of shooting weddings. Yes, yeah, like, it was exactly the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's because you, you're sort of, you're kind of mentally prepared. I mean, especially with experience, of course. You know, once you've shot yeah, X amount yeah. of different weddings, you sort of know, you know, what the procedure is and what's going to happen and stuff. Exactly. But certainly, like, the first few weddings that I've shot, if I remember back, that was terrifying. Yeah, 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 absolutely, <laughs> you know? absolutely. And, and to be honest, shooting weddings is a lot more terrifying than shooting yeah. scenes. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah this is always a, this is, I always say this, is like my ultimate nightmare is to, you know, having to shoot a wedding on film. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be a nightmare. That yeah. would be a nightmare. <laughs> but um, you know, it, I remember. You know, when I first started shooting weddings, um, I shot my first few weddings before I was married, so I, I had literally no experience. Mm -hmm. You know, I couldn't even think like, oh, you know, at my wedding there was I don't know the first dance and the first kiss and the rings and all that kind of. You know, I was very underprepared. <laughs> Although I did, I did watch a lot of YouTube videos before. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's, what, that's what I did. That's what I did. My first wedding was my actually my sister's wedding, right. and um, I'd, I'd I'd been sh I'd been photographing photographing out of work, but just doing you know macros or landscapes or yeah. flowers or whatever. And uh, she wanted a wedding photographer and said, "Oh, what are you doing?" I was like, well, "I'm not really not sure that I'm I'm capable of shooting a wedding." But she was like, "Look, we're having it in Florence. I can't afford oh. to bring a wedding photographer over. The wedding right. photographers over there are really expensive, so you're gonna have to do it." I was like, "All right." And then it was just straight onto YouTube and just yeah, lots of YouTube videos, lots yeah. of magazines, yeah. lots of other people's pet photos, just looking through it and going, all oh, right, I've got to try yeah. and remember all this for, to, yeah. to shoot a wedding, you know, so, but that's the best way to learn, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I always, you know, I still do that. And I mean, granted, I don't, um, I don't shoot a lot of weddings at all. I, I would say, you know, if, if I, if I'm asked, I'll probably do it, but um, sure. it's not really, you know, it's not, not really what I do. Um, but I always go back um, to to uh, Daniel Ackerley's website, who was the uh, the photographer who shot my wedding originally. Yeah. And I always kind of think like, okay, what would Daniel do? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I go back, I check it out. I'm like, oh, okay, that's some good ideas. And then it gives me some 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 fresh ideas and stuff. And um, yeah, and I find it, you know, I find it. But yeah, uh, weddings is that's definitely the one thing that terrifies me the most. It is. It's hard work. It's hard work. And I always know about it at the end of the day. My arms are aching, my back is aching. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, all, it's also a lot of fun. It's very, um, very satisfying once you're done and you've got your images and the album looks good. You think, yeah, I've done all right there. You know, one of, one of the most ex ex exhausting shoots was actually um, part of the, uh, the, the conference that we shot yeah. in Stratford. It was the, the golf day. Oh, yes. You remember, because <laughs> I was on the golf course. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I was yeah. running around in the like it was, it was a really sunny hot day, and I was running around the golf course all day long, following these different parties. You know, shooting all the golf that was going on, and I was literally like running uphill, downhill, <laughs> finding another group, and yeah. you know, I spent all day on my feet. You didn't have a golf cart. Well, so <laughs> when I was talking to um, to you know the person who, who hired us originally, you yeah. know, I was just chatting and. I, just a funny story. I'm telling you, man, I was really exhausting. She was like, you know, there's a whole bunch of golf carts like at the entrance. <laughs> <laughs> I always just take one of those. And I'm like, oh, yeah. really? Oh, great. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> thanks for telling me now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Next time. Yeah, Next time. yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it was good. I can't remember what I went up and did, but uh, yeah, it was good fun. Yeah, it was, wasn't it like um, half of half of the whole lot went, um, went golfing and then the other half went on a like a... a was it, a, it was like a sightseeing tour or something? I can't yeah, remember. something like that. Yeah. But mine was a lot more sedate, I think. <laughs> 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 but it was, it was fun all the same. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was actually a fun day. Um, yeah. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a golfer, so I don't. I have very little experience on golf course courses. But uh, but it was fun. I can't, I can't stand golf. Really? No, nah, doesn't work for me. Puts my back out for a start. Well, yeah, there's yeah. that. Yeah. There's a weird place. Um, there's another doc reference coming, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a weird place about five minutes from my house, which is like a, a common. It's like a, a for, like a piece of forest land, woodland. Um, it's called Chorleywood Common, oh, and right, it's yeah. it's it's a really beautiful spot. It's mm. it's really really nice. But for some reason, there's there's a golf course in the middle of it. It's not even a golf. It's not even a proper golf course. It's just weird. It's a, like it's not meant to be there, you know. Very odd. Yeah, it's very odd. It's, and it's like and people just walk across it. I mean, it's not like a. 
golf like. clubby type of thing. It's like a public oh, golf course or something. But I can't see how you can even play golf there because there's lots of people walking across it, walking oh, the dogs. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's lethal. Look out for sighting golf balls, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. So one thing I wanted to know was, um, just going back to your day job for a second, because I'm so interested in what you do and and because it it kind of helps helps me understand how you developed to get really into photography yes how did you get into your day job to begin with what made you think that's what i want to do with my life (laughs) um that was much much later on in life i mean i'd I'd been to university and one of my um one of my modules at the time was criminology and uh, i really enjoyed it then but i didn't pursue it you know as part of a bigger degree that i was doing so i didn't really pursue it and then I was working at um I was managing a leisure center and uh the job just came up in fact it was my, my partner that saw it in the paper she was like oh this would be really good you, you'll enjoy this mm-hmm. and I thought oh yeah well okay maybe I'll, I'll give it a go you know it's, it's been going into forensics there's going to be thousands and thousands of people applying for it I'll never get it so I put the application in and I yeah I was just lucky enough to get it to be honest and oh, yeah. yeah so that, that was it there wasn't ever any a big plan to go into forensics when I was younger it was just kind of stumble across an advert and yeah just apply for it and all the best jobs happen that way by chance by yeah, chance sure. yeah, by yeah. chance yeah, yeah. 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 if I'd if wanted to do it all my life I'd have never have gone there. <laughs> 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 no, it would never have happened so yeah yeah, yeah. 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 but well, I, 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 I mean a lot of us that, that do the job are some people have done you know degrees and PhDs or, or whatever else in, in forensics and stuff and and others are just you know just stumble across the job and you know, apply for it and get it. So mm. it's good. So anyone out there wants to do it, just go for it, do it. Wow. Great but job, yeah. I imagine, um, I imagine that there are probably not that many job openings in that line of work. It seems like a quite it's a very specialist um, line of work, really. Um, it, I, I think that there's more and more now. And I, I, I know in the Met that they've, they've started recruiting again. So, yeah, I think more and more it's becoming, uh, there's more openings coming, there's more opportunities. So. Mm. Yeah. Where do they advertise? Uh, I think it's just in the local paper for or the Evening Standard, I think, but I'm, oh. I'm not sure, to be honest. And on, on, on the Met Police website, there should be adults on there as well. So it's not, it's not like MI5 or MI6 where it's like a riddle, like, you know, it's like a crossword <laughs> riddle, and then if if you get the answers right, then they contact you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. What films have you been watching I don't lately? know. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I don't think I don't think it's that that hidden. I think that they're they're, they're out there, they're out there trying to get trying to get people in. So, well, it kind of makes you wonder, like how I mean, how 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 do how does MI six advertise for spies? It's not like it's not on your new local like job center list. Is no, <laughs> no. Well, I don't know. I mean, yeah, uh, 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 they must advertise somewhere, I guess. So. It's probably it's probably some kind of you know some kind of riddle and some bizarre specialist nerdy like newspaper kind of a thing magazine thing <laughs> i want to know which what magazine this is well i guess you know you have to you have to kind of you have to crack the riddle first or something like that you know <laughs> and then escape room is it yeah well yeah yeah <laughs> like it <laughs> cool brilliant and so um so at what point did you decide to um to set up your your photography business um so I, I, I said years ago, I, I my sister. I said my sister asked me to shoot her wedding, oh, yeah. and um, after that, it was one of her friends that, that then saw her photos and was like, oh, you know, it, it can bang and do my wedding. And I was like, mm-hmm. I'm really not that good, so I'm not going to charge anything. And I think they they just paid for my petrol or something. Yeah. Um. So that the, yeah, the first couple of weddings I did was for just you know friends of friends or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um. I didn't get paid anything for it, but it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of learning. Mm-hmm. A lot of learning. Um. And then it just kind of went from there. And then I was like, oh, I just started charging a little bit, and yeah, it just kind of picked up from there, really. Mm. How did yeah. you, how easy did you find it to uh, to find clients when you were first starting out? Um, everything was just friends of friends and word of mouth. Um, mm. I I didn't advertise anywhere. I don't advertise now. Um, so it's just people that have known people or people that I've shot. Or sometimes I'll shoot someone's wedding, and then you know, a year, a couple of years later, you go back and do a newborn or. You know, and then all of a sudden you're doing 40th birthday parties or, or whatever it might be. So, yeah, it's just, yeah. It's just been from that, really. And then they tell their friends and, you know, it's just gone on from there. Yeah. It's, it's mainly word of mouth. 
really mainly um, for me yeah yeah i mean i don't advertise or anything um mm. i say i don't have as much time as most i guess to, to to shoot and you know so i just have to kind of try and fit it in around work and around family family life and yeah and everything else that's going on so yeah yeah, I'm almost trying to work out when you actually sleep because it's like you, know, <laughs> you, you work like a night shift and yeah, have a shoot during the day. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes you just got to grab a couple of hours or a few hours wherever you can, really. So. Yeah. Do you have consistent shifts with your day job? Yes. Yeah, I do. Oh, so you can plan it. You can plan ahead. Yeah. yeah. So, so we're given a 10 week rota that we've got at the moment. Oh, okay. so plan well ahead if I need to. Because yeah. that must be because I guess some weddings that come in, you know, it could be, you know, a year, even two years in advance when they're they're trying to book you, right? Um, are you able to kind of? Yeah, say, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. And, and and if I'm working, I can put in for leave or, or whatever. So yeah, oh, yeah, that's cool. Work it out one way or another. That's good. At least you've got the flexibility to be able to work yeah. it in your favor. You know? Definitely, yeah, yeah. You got to have a life. <laughs> yeah, you got you got to have a life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> so, how far how far do you want to take your your side business? Um, to be honest, I'd I'd, I'd love I'd love to one day just go fully professional and up and just, mm -hmm. just have just be a photographer. And that's it. That, that would be the, the absolute dream. Um, obviously, in the climate that we are now, it's kind of been moved further and further back. Yeah, <laughs> but I've always said, you know, it's I've got three kids and three young kids, and you know, it's nice to have a regular income. It's nice to know what is coming in every month and, and stuff. So for now, you know, until they're older and, out the, and you know, on their own, I think I'll be doing what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, after that, yeah, I'd, I'd love, I'd love to, to just be a professional photographer and, and a photographer alone. That'd be great. It'd be awesome. Yeah. Mm. Wow. I look at all, all my friends and stuff that are, that are professional photographers and I'm like, yes, I would love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the dream. That's the dream. <laughs> it's, uh, one of my friends is he's German um he's a he's a professional photographer and all I see him do is sailing like he's constantly <laughs> on some sail on some sailing trip and it's like when I'm instead of what like, yeah, when does he actually yeah. work I mean, <laughs> yeah, exactly. that would be the life yeah yeah absolutely would wouldn't it just to be able to afford a boat would be nice I don't know if it's I don't know if he owns a boat but he's like constantly on some sailing trip wow you know <laughs> he wow. went um yeah, he kind of he he bought this um this tent thing that you put on the roof of your car. Mm, yeah. And it turns into like a one man tent, you know, you can sleep yeah. in it. And so he just drove up to the I think the, the northern German coast, you know, went like went around the coast visiting. Um always very, you know, very uh, very smooth with a mm -hmm. glass of wine, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and um yeah, it was just um uh, just hanging out there and going on a sailing trip here and there. It was oh, uh just yeah. alive. I'm thinking so I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> Great. Yeah. I could do that next week. Yeah, probably not in Germany. You probably would have to go in like, uh, you know, what is it, 14 day quarantine? Oh, something. that's, oh, God, quarantine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's getting tiresome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is getting tiresome. Yeah. It is getting tiresome. Absolutely. I'd be, um, you know, I'm glad when it's all over. Yeah. One day. Yeah, another year or so and we'll be good. Seriously. Let's yeah. not get into that. No. <laughs> it's depressing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, we we will have to start photographing things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cups, cups. Yeah, yeah. I see you have a very, a very nice um, branded cup yourself there. I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, made made by my uh, my lovely wife. Hey. Yeah, nice. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm loving yours as well. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Just putting the merchandise here, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's, there's nothing in them. Well. <laughs> I would have thought there'd be coffee in there. Yeah, no, it's yeah. yeah. Sometimes there's yeah, <laughs> or gin, or gin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's actually Diet Coke in there at the moment. Oh, uh, rock and roll. Yeah, very rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so have you have you got any um any photography uh, kind of projects planned for the future? Um, I've, I've been thinking about what to do, what to do next. So yeah, um, at, at the moment, um, well, du during lockdown, I got all the kids' cameras, not, nothing too extravagant. They were old 400Ds, I think, Canon 400Ds. Oh, okay. 60 pounds off eBay. Yeah. Nice. Really splashed out. No, um, and yeah, so all, all three of my kids have got cameras. So we, 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 I've started teaching them photography and um, Max, my, my son, my eldest, he's, he's been doing a little bit of filming and uh, you know, photographing his cars in the garden. 
So yeah, so I'll, I'll probably try and do something with them around it. We're kind of really nerdy, but we'll, we'll go out for walks and there's four of us with cameras and then Nick, my wife, is standing there without a camera. I'm like, <laughs> 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 but people probably look at us and think, oh, what the hell is going on here? But yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'll try and do something with them, I think, and you know, they'll they really enjoy it as well. So yeah, I'll try and keep that going for them. You know, that would be my wife's ultimate nightmare. I think, <laughs> I think it's fine as well. So. You know, actually, um, I'm proud to say that my wife has not listened to a single one of our Camera Shake oh. podcast episodes <laughs> <laughs> to this point. <laughs> That's hardcore. <laughs> yeah, it's hardcore. Especially because my um, my stepdaughter um, just started her GCSE year and she's picked photography as her like GCSE major, you know, that was her major subject. Yeah. Um, and that's that's quite interesting. Um, it's been interesting to see her kind of getting into it, and you know, they've got um, a list of sort of you know projects that they've got to work on. Yeah. So, yeah. And it starts, you know, it starts very simply with like you know, fill the frame. Yeah. Okay. Cool. You yeah. know, and then they've got it. That's the brief, and they've got to take like I don't know, twelve photos, <laughs> um, and make like a little kind of a you know, little scrapbook um, with with the photos and stuff. So. It's uh, you know it's it's interesting. You see, if that was me, it. I would have taken photography too. Yeah, knowing that my dad was a photographer, mm. and that he might do all the work for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that may or may not have happened. I'm not sure entirely. <laughs> I I'd rather <laughs> confirm nor deny. <laughs> she's smart. <laughs> she knows what she's doing. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's like you know it's like she's the smart, call. Your, your daughter, she's smart. <laughs> they were they went they went away um, on on like a short holiday to the coast, like for the weekend, like yeah. for like an extended weekend. And I'm getting this phone call like, oh, um, you know, um, I've, you know, I've got a deadline like on Monday and if, you know, I'm missing six photographs. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that's not much, <laughs> yeah, that's not much I can do about that. Cause she, she went away for like three or four days and she forgot her camera. Oh no. Uh, you know, no. so, <laughs> so she's like, Oh, I can't take any pictures. I'm like, but you have a phone. <laughs> like, you know, surely. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it like the best camera is the one that you've got with you? You know, that's the thing. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, she's like, oh, no, but I couldn't possibly do it on my phone. I'm like, well, okay. And she goes like, oh, can I use some of your pictures? <laughs> it's a really different, it's a tricky question as a dad, because what do you say, you know? If yeah, you say yeah. no, you're a bastard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? And if you say yes... Then that's not really the right. Doesn't feel like it's the right thing to do, you know. So it's like yeah, it's a bit yeah. of a you're kind of like that's not cool. I'm like we're in the rock and a hard place. Here. It's got to be nice. Yeah, it's a life yeah. lesson. <laughs> so what did you say then? Well, I did say yes, of course. <laughs> you know. So I mean, I kind of thought like, okay, well, but we're going to have to make it look like they could potentially be your photos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know, I send her some close-up shots of the Ferrari. What <laughs> 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 the cool shots? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and stuff like that so you know but um Amazing. but yeah it's funny <laughs> and it's funny to see her little like um her little like photo scrapbook you know and you've got yeah. all these shots and <laughs> all of a sudden you've got some shots that clearly don't belong in there <laughs> <laughs> and i'm not saying you know i'm not i'm not trying to make it sound like my you know my shots are like amazingly different but it is i, I mean there is a difference there is you know a difference I mean? yeah, yeah yeah so um yeah. so it's funny but i'm not i'm actually i'm loving the fact that she's um, that she's chosen that, yeah. you know, cool. because yeah. um, great. because in, in my family, uh, there is a danger that things go too far down the scientific route mm -hmm. because my wife is very, like very much into science and my, uh, my oldest, uh, my stepson is, you know, a scientist. He's, he's going off to study paleontology wow. um, next year. So he's like, a, you know, a yeah. total science nerd, if you want to call it that. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and my, my youngest daughter, she's much more of a like creative, you know, she, she plays music and she likes, she has a little Nikon camera, Nice, nice. <laughs> you know, she takes, uh, she specializes in dog photography. Yeah, she does. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's so, good in there. yeah, it's good, man. She, um, I got her a little Nikon, um, for Christmas last year. And it's one of these uh, like little, you know, kids' cameras. They're very colorful on the outside. Uh, I think it's got Paris on it or something. But it's a decent, like it's a, it's a 16 megapixel sensor in there. So, yeah, yeah. wow, you yeah, know, it's, yeah, it's, you know, it's not bad at all. That's a bigger sensor than my first compact camera. 
Oh, for sure, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, my first digital camera. Oh. Like, I don't know what it, what it was yeah. like. My first digital camera was one point three. Yeah, well, exactly oh. right. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, it's um, that's a bigger sensor than what's in my GH five S. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's uh, it really does it does create um, decent images. I mean, it's it's made for kids. It's kind of um, it's not a kiddie camera, but basically, you know, the menus are si- a little bit simplified, yeah. and uh, and it's basically uh, it's indestru- it's indestructible. Um, you know, it's it's shockproof. It's water- like I think it's waterproof up, up to like ten meters or whatever it is. So, um, in fact, you know, Nikon make this accessory that you attach to it. So in case you're in the sea or something or in the pool and you drop it, it it inflates and it floats to the top. Brilliant. 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 Great. <laughs> that's what, that's the forward thinking. They're thinking about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's good. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we went to the lakes at some point, uh, you know, just after she got in the camera and, uh, we were talking, you know, we we're saying like, oh, okay. So what kind of, you know, what kind of photography do you think you like? Like what sort of thing do you think you want to take pictures of? And she goes, oh, I, I don't want to take pictures of people. I'm like, oh, okay. You know, so what, what do you want to, Take pictures of. And she goes like, I think I want to take pictures of dogs, dogs and ducks. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, dogs and ducks, cool. And she goes, uh, and as we were like walking around the lakes, and there's lots of people there with the dogs and everything. She goes, you know, can I? Or can I? Do you think I can take pictures of of, uh, of of some of the dogs? And I said, yeah, well, you, I'm sure you can, but you have to go up to the owners and ask. Yeah, you know. And I was fully expecting having to be the person. To go and who goes up to these people and asks them, right? Yeah. Um, but she was she was awesome. She was so like confident. She would like walk up to random strangers and just go, you know, excuse me, may I please take a picture of your mm-hmm. dog? And uh, you, you know what it's like? Any yeah. dog owner, if if anybody who, who owns a dog gets asked whether you, whether you know somebody can take a picture of the dog, it's like the pride that comes out. You yeah. just go, yes, of course, because <laughs> my dog is clearly the most beautiful dog yeah. in the world. <laughs> Yeah. So it's great. Yeah, she uh, she got some really good shots. That's brilliant. Yeah. That's brilliant. Has she been taking photos of Solo? Uh, yeah, she has actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She has with her iPad though. Oh, oh. Yeah, and they're not bad. They're not bad. bad. Yeah. yeah. Um... <laughs> not very <laughs> pro, but no, it's actually it's good. I mean, uh, he's you know to be honest, he uh, he never sits still long <laughs> enough. <laughs> so yeah, he's like a mini rocket <laughs> essentially. Yeah, good. Full of energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. Do you do you think you're going to get into like dog photography at some point? Uh, well, my, my my partner Nick, she, she she's very into dogs and mm. well, she's very into pets and animals. So she's always trying to encourage me to take pictures of, of pets and do pet photography. Um, yeah. I I don't mind. I don't mind. I, I will I will take on any challenge. Yeah. Um, I'll certainly give it a go. So yeah, I haven't uh, I haven't had the opportunity yet, but um, I wouldn't mind at all to be honest. Yeah. What is um, dogs like me much though? So, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what are some really cool product shots on your website actually? Thank you. Um, Cheers. That's uh, yeah, I, 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 I said, I, I just enjoy doing photography and it's, mm-hmm. a, it's a nice release. And even you know, if it's just something I find at home and I think, oh, that might make an interesting shot, then yeah, I'll, I'll go for it and yeah, give it a go and see what, see what I can, uh, see what I can get from it. There's some really cool bottle shots on your website, actually. There's, um, I think there's a there's a beer bottle with like a lot of, um, you, know, you can see the water droplets, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> the condensation and stuff coming off of that. That looks really good. Thank um, you very much. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Did you uh, did you fake that or is that is that real? No, no, no. It's all all real, all real. I'm I'm really not that good at Photoshop. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm good enough to do to do the basics and you know to clean up photos, but yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. not to do that sort of stuff. But yeah, no, it's all all real. Big mess, but yeah, it's all yeah, fun. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have any uh, like practical effects with that beer bottle, or was it literally a beer bottle which had condensation on? It was. Uh, what did I use? I used. Um, I actually searched on YouTube. I think it was I'm trying to think. Uh, I think it was Carl Taylor. Um, he was using. I'm trying to remember what it's called now. Some sort of sugar syrup. Uh, so I went, I went down to, to, to Tesco's and uh, found it. I thought, right, yes, let's go. Oh, great. <laughs> Mixed it up and put it on there. So, yeah. So it was all, all real. All, all real. Yeah. Just had to let it let it set overnight and then, yeah, it looked, looked really good. Yeah. Wait, so that sh- what was that sugar syrup used for? That, that was used for the condensation. Oh, that so was the condensation. And spray it on there. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then let it set and it, yeah, 
it looked, just looked really, really good. So I was like, That's cool, man. How, how, many, how many bottles of beer did you have to go through to get to that final Plenty. shot? <laughs> Plenty. <laughs> Plenty. At, 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 least, at least six or seven was drunk that night. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And only the first few shots were sharp. Yeah. <laughs> and in the first few, yeah, exactly. By the end of it, it didn't matter. I was like, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, that'll do. Cool. Actually, that could be an interesting series, couldn't it? A series of six photos taken as you progressively get more drunk. Yeah. Same setup, but just all getting more blurry, more out of focus as you go on. <laughs> <laughs> Start seeing two of them. Ah. Well, I, like actually, I tell you what, what um, that sort of thing, in fact, happened to me only the other day. Got drunk. Well, a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> I'd say tipsy. I'd say tipsy. Um, but I was, uh, I was actually, I was designing a, um, a thumbnail. And I was, you know, I was creating some masking in Photoshop and uh, compositing some things together. And it was getting really late. And I had a few, I had a few drinks. And it got to the point where I had to give up because it looked not very good. <laughs> but then when I got back and, you know, I spent literally like two hours maybe on this. Yeah. And then I, I gave up and I was just too tired. And I could keep my eyes open. You know, I went to bed and I come back the next morning and I turn the computer and I look at it. And it's shocking. <laughs> shocking. It was so bad. And then it literally took me like not even five minutes to fix and completely finish the whole thing in the morning. And I literally spent hours on this <laughs> the night before. And it's just, it just went totally wrong. So what, what lesson have you learned? Don't drink in Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, clearly. So I'm going to get that on a t-shirt for you. Yeah. Don't drink in Photoshop. It's a good idea. <laughs> could have. Le- your, yeah. It could be lethal. Yeah, that's your next mug. Oh, okay. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> So you've got a lot of your um, of your photography on your website. It's uh, bengasudeki.com. We'll put the uh, the link to the website in the description. Um, and you've got everything that uh, that anybody would need to book you on there. You've got uh, different portfolios. Yeah, yeah, portfolios, um, various portfolios, uh, mm. some sample images, and obviously contact details, all that sort of mm. stuff is on there. So yeah. Okay, uh, Where, whereabouts yeah. are you based? I'm based in um, Cheshunt, Hertfordshire. Oh yeah, but I uh, obviously travel around here, there, and everywhere. So yeah, cool. So, have you got any any uh, any fun, any other fun uh, photography projects planned? Well, um, the, the kids are off during half term, so um, we're trying to find somewhere that uh, would be nice to go. Obviously, it's going to have to be uh, <laughs> in the country. Yeah. So I don't know, we're looking at places like Devon, Cornwall, just anywhere that we can go that's got some nice sites. Maybe we try and do some some uh, landscape stuff with them. Yeah. I think that I'll have to buy them all tripods now, but, you know, we'll, <laughs> we'll cross they, that until we get there. Are they trying to borrow your lenses yet? No, 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 no. <laughs> they're nowhere near there. I'm not sure, I'm not sure that, that uh, my daughters even know they can take the lens off their camera yet. So. <laughs> yeah, don't tell them. <laughs> Let me tell you. I'm not, I'm not going to tell them any different. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But the kit lens, that, that'll, that'll, uh, that'll work out just fine. <laughs> yeah. It's called a kit lens because it's part of the kit. It needs to stay on there yeah. all exactly. the time. Exactly. <laughs> don't exactly. push that my, button on the side there. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> my son has figured out that he could take his lens off. Mm. So he's got my, uh, my first nifty 50. So I've given him that one. Right. He's, he's quite happy changing back and forth all the time. I'm like, oh, no. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but the well, girls are happy with the kit lens, so that's good. Don't yeah. um, don't do what I did when you go away. If you go down to Devon, I recently came back from Devon, took all my gear with me, so for uh, a week. Do you want to know how many times I got the camera out? <laughs> don't tell me none. None. Oh, no. <laughs> Not once. No. That's terrible, isn't it? It's terrible. That is terrible. <laughs> Although but, probably you know, it's, it's just to say that I must have been having a good time. That I didn't yeah, even exactly, think exactly. about. There's, you there's know? other stuff going on, other stuff to do. Yeah, yeah. Terrible. But don't do that. You'll regret no, it. Right. But, yeah, I mean, we talked about this before. It's, like, it's one of these things where um, I, I always think that it's more important to to spend quality time with your friends and family than, than ultimately... Yeah. Um, than, than taking pictures. Yeah. So we, we were originally, we were meant to go to Canada to see family um, yeah. this summer, which obviously we had to, you know, delay until next year. Um, but my, my plan was to 
really get into landscape photography because it's not really something that I do very much of. Yeah. Um, and I just wanted to take it as an opportunity to photograph some cool landscapes. And, you know, we're uh, going to go to Nova Scotia. It's also a place I haven't been to yeah. before. And uh, I, know, I know that uh, there's some really great places to photograph, especially by the coast and, mm. um, you know, there's some great beaches and some really, like, really cool mm. places to, uh, to shoot. And I kind of thought, oh, man, it's fantastic. You know, it's going to be great because I'm going to be going to be up at like four o'clock in the morning and, you know, <laughs> hit it at first, first sunlight and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then until my wife reminded me that, you know, it was like a, you know, it's like a family holiday sort of a thing. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. we're there to see family, yeah. like not to, yeah. not to, uh, uh-huh. not to kind of, you know, do photo shoots. And it's, I mean, it's true, you know. Yeah, you got, you got to try and find that balance somewhere, somewhere in there, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So. And, you know, I mean, since, of course, since I've got a family over there, you know, it's, in a sense, it's easy to, well, I mean, it's costly, but it's, it would be easy to go back and just say, like, okay, I want to spend a week there just doing yeah. doing photography, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, definitely. But definitely. we'll see. Yeah. So, you know. And if the lockdown has shown anything, is that that family time is really precious, so. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. Um, yeah, in many ways. And, you know, for anybody who's, uh, you know, who needs like a lift me up type of thing, get a dog, get a puppy. It works yeah, every yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to edit all of your dog references ah, so. out. Another ah. child there, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, What's more work than a, a, a child or, or a dog? Uh, funny you should mention that. I had the exact discussion with my wife the other day. And it's, I mean, it's, it's definitely a child actually yeah. yeah it's definitely a child although you know puppies are notoriously like i mean they are they kind of are hard work and and they're not in a way yeah you know because of course you have to house train them so that's annoying you know that takes a few months yeah until that works you know and so you get a few months of dealing with but well, it's not too dissimilar from a baby really to be honest yeah. only the yeah. dog doesn't doesn't wear nappies so <laughs> you know um <laughs> yeah i mean that's you know that's, that's the thing <laughs> <laughs> but um you know and that's the teething thing yeah and all of that you know but um i don't know i mean it's, it's still it's not as much it's not as much work as as a baby really it can't be there the difference is is that dogs are like puppies are so much more independent right from the start yeah mm. you know they can i mean you know they can already walk mm-hmm. You know, they they can already launch themselves off of the sofa. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're mobile. It's not like a baby. You know, with a baby, you really um, you have to carry them around forever, and it takes like you know until they can walk and all that. So that that doesn't really happen with with dogs. So you, you know, it's a much shorter time span as well. You know, they're only puppies for like uh, yeah, the best part of a year really, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. so. No, I highly recommend it. You should get a dog. No, you're all right. <laughs> no, I've got two cats. That's enough. <laughs> yeah, I have a cat too. They don't get on. They don't get on? Oh, wow. Easy yep. household. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we have, a, we have a cat with a dog. We have two rabbits. Oh, wow. And two hamsters, I think. Something like that. <laughs> and a snail. <laughs> oh, yeah, and, a, and an African, what's it called? An African giant snail. Snail. Oh. Giant African snail. Yeah. Um, called Gary, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Gary. So yeah, yeah. One of the uh, the funniest coincidences is, is that um, the puppy loves snails. Oh, really? Yeah, he, uh, he keeps eating snails in the garden. Oh. So I think Gary's Gary. days are numbered. Gary, <laughs> 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 I might I might have to call the CSI over at some yeah, point. It's like, hmm. <laughs> oh, <don't tell> Cara. <laughs> what's the evidence? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, bring my camera. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Right, man. Listen, I'll, you know, wish you best of luck um, with your with your photography business. Yeah, man. Obviously, you know, now that hopefully things are like picking up a little bit. Yes. And yeah. um, you know, keep the keep the streets safe, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my best. I'll do my best. So that, thank you for for having me on. It's been a, a pleasure. Yeah, it's been an absolute education. Keep up the good work. Loving the show. Great, fantastic. Well, it's, it's a it's a pleasure to have you on, man. It's, uh, it was really uh, very entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Excellent. All right.
Good to meet you, man. Um, we'll uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon. You have to get you yeah. on in another another episode and new yeah. season. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be a, it'd be CSI. What what do they have? CSI New York, CSI Miami, CSI, what was it? <laughs> LA, whatever else they had. I can't remember Chicago. Yeah. Chicago, Chicago, did they? Oh, Chicago, Chicago, Chicago. <laughs> Is it? I don't know. I don't know. I did. Um, I just filmed a video, um, like a like a Photoshop tutorial thing on um, how to change the color of anything in Photoshop, right? Yes. And of course, you've got to use. I can't really say it. You've got to use hue saturation layers. Yeah. So my pronunciation of the word hue or hue, <laughs> I don't even know. That's that's going to be that's going to be interesting. There's almost no H on it. <laughs> yeah, almost exactly. So in my case, there is definitely no H. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. Anyway, I'm an immigrant. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs>